In this video, we will be building the analog light. This is my tribute to the analog pocket. STLs are in the description. Like and subscribe if you like this content. Make sure you check back for more builds by me, Bosmods. Here are the 3D printed bits you'll need. The face, back, buttons, hold downs, and your choice of battery cover, 3D printed, which is included in the files, or factory. Now the bits you'll need from your DS Lite, the upper screen, and the lens for the upper screen, the motherboard, the screws, that hold the casing together, including the ones that hold the upper casing together. You'll use those extra screws to hold things down. And the buttons. I also included 3D button files if you'd rather use that. And the metal plate from the back of your DS Lite. And more buttons. Checking the fitment of the shell and the battery cover. All this is 3D printed. In this case, I did give it a light sanding and sprayed it with a matte finish black. Here's the motherboard and how I soldered up the buttons. The button PCBs that are on the front of the unit are actually from a hacked up DS Lite. That is a Type-C module. But you can see how I ran the wires here. Basically, those wires are jumpered directly from the buttons to the button PCBs that are from the hacked up DS light board. Here's part of it. You can see I just cut it with a grinder, literally. Same with this. This is all from a dead board. I have a bunch of those. Here I just test fit the Type-C module and I'm putting on the metal plate and I'm putting it on upside down. Let's all laugh at me. These jiggly things are the start and select button from the hacked up DS Lite motherboard. These are going to be the right and left trigger. So I'm putting in the 3D printed buttons for the back. Kind of adjusting them into place. Now I'm ready to put on the buttons from the DS Lite motherboard that I hacked up. The start and select buttons again are going to be the right and left trigger. So I'm just placing those. And there's a hold down for these as well that pinches them into place and allows the trigger to rock and hit the tactile switch takes a little bit of work to get them working correctly and line them up right. But once you do, they work well. Also, you could use tactile switches of your own choosing. Again, just putting in these triggers. the next hold down all of the hold downs are included in the STL files again that is linked in the description all right now I'm going to solder the buttons onto the board Fluxing the places where I will be soldering. And then soldering up 
actually I'm tinning right now the pads that I'll be using. Now I'm wiring up the buttons. Trying not to get in the way of the camera. All right, couldn't do it with my hands, so let's do it this way. All right, now that I botched that up, no, I'm kidding, it works great. There was nothing edited out there. All right, now let's get all of this back plate put together. Get all the wires out of the way so I can move the board into place. A little bit of finesse and a whole lot of luck. There we go. Now you take a screw with a little washer for this one side because you're using a part of the board that has a larger hole in it. Once you screw that in, push on it. And screw the other side in, which is a standard mount All right, now we have the back plate mostly ready. We can move on to the front plate. Speaker hold down. Screws. Those came from the upper shell assembly of the DS Lite. Well, wait. This little ring right here, the magic ring, Make sure you put that in. It spaces the face of the speaker off the plastic so there's no interference and you get good quality audio. All right, now I'll turn the hole down the proper way. I definitely had it the right way the first time and did not edit out any mistakes. And start over. Not really, I just did this backwards. Here's the screen and we're gonna put it in if you look right here, I cut the last three pins off, which would have been the audio pins. This is the upper screen from a DS Lite. Just very carefully snip those last pins off and it will fit into the lower screen socket. And you can complete this build without any ribbon cable extensions. Just finessing the screen in. There are some clips that kind of snap in place making sure the front plastic lens has come flush with the front of the unit. That plastic lens is from the DS Lite upper screen assembly. So other than the smudges, it looks pretty good. But let's continue on. Drink some coffee for energy or your favorite beverage. These are the factory buttons, but again, there are files for 3D buttons, which I prefer because I designed them a little bit taller. Makes it easier to play for those button mashing games. Or when cross button manipulation is used, as in like running in Mario. When you hold down the B and hit the A. But anyway, just popping the buttons in here. Make sure you put them upside down first. So that way you get to do it again. All right, last but not least, Y. All right, put the membrane on. I actually glued it down. It makes it a little bit easier. Just a tiny little dabble of glue, but 
I didn't show that here. Again with this one, a little bit of glue just to hold it in place for assembly. Here's the start and select button. They're one unit. It works out better this way. It allowed for me to place the buttons without an extra button PCB. I'm gluing the membrane down over the start and select. Good job. All right, now let's put the button PCBs in place. Again, these button PCBs are from a DS Lite motherboard that has been cut up with a grinder and a cutoff wheel. Here's the hold down. This hold down should work for any PCB assembly you're able to use. If you have something else you wanna cut up, you should be able to use this as long as the button spacing allows for the holes to match up that are in the face you should be good so now i'm just screwing the hole down in place all right that is officially pinching that in place Same thing here, cut up from a DS Lite motherboard. Here's the hold down. You can see it has an offset to go around the ribbon cable for the upper screen. So I'm just holding the ribbon out of the way and placing the hold down over the button PCB. The hold downs are identical for both sides, but the right one uses the right two sets of holes and the left one uses the left two sets of holes. All right, now we've got our PCBs pinched in place. Check your buttons. And you noticed that the X was sideways. <laughs> it's all right, it happens. I fixed it, but we're not gonna talk about it anymore. However, what we will talk about is tucking these wires in so that we can close the case up nicely. There. That's better. All right. Now I'm using a little bit of electrical tape to just hold some of the wires. If you notice in the center of the front face, there's kind of a channel. That's for the wires. You can tape your wires in the middle or do whatever type of wire management you feel necessary. All right, let's try to button it up. It's easy to kind of hold it like this. It kind of helps line the ribbon cable up so you can get it installed pretty easily. All right, now that I did that, you'll notice the little clips on the back plate should align with the openings in the top of the front plate. So clip those in first, once you have the ribbon cable inserted correctly, and then squeeze it together. Of course, you'll have to line your wires up. I did it, but it completely blocked it out of the video with my big hand. But line your wires up, make sure everything's fitting together nicely. When you're satisfied, go ahead and start to screw it together. Make sure everything's good and flush, that your buttons are working. This uses the factory volume and power slider, but you may have to trim them down a little bit to work. And there you have it, the analog light.